What's going on everybody? Ooh, let me tell you what, this episode is going to be pretty intense. So much so, we're going to split the topic into two videos. So this is going to be all about caching and stale data. But the important thing to know is that these are not the same thing with React Query. We have caching, which is actually what we'll be talking about in the next video, and then we have data that may or may not be stale. That's what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. So the whole idea of React Query is that we retrieve data from our backend and React Query makes it very easy for us to stay in sync with the backend. So if there's some changes in the backend, you know, some data is changed in the database, we want those changes to be propagated to the front end to be seen. But there will be a point in time when the data on the front end is not in sync with the backend. And there's a bunch of different settings we can configure inside of React Query to tell it how we want it to refetch and resync that data. This whole concept is known as stale while revalidate. So stale data will be presented to us initially while React Query goes and gets the new data refreshing what's shown on the front end. This was the exact behavior with our crypto price. At some point, this price is out of date on the front end and React Query will go make another request to the back end, replacing this with the new price. And that's what we saw in the previous videos. So to go through this, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a single query and we're going to use this one here because we can more easily control the backend. So this is a custom API we set up. You could use a public API as well if you don't have this set up, but I'm going to go with our custom one here. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this other query. We're not going to need it. And inside of our app, we will change what we are displaying. Let's take a look at the API response. So we'll say npm start. You can see we now just have a single query and it has data, data, and then this is an array of customers. So what we can do is inside of our return or alternatively what many people will do. I've kind of grown to love ternaries, but I'll go a different way this time by saying if, and we'll do some optional chaining to traverse into that. Customer query dot data dot data dot customers. So if that evaluates to true, then we will return div class name being app. And then inside of here, we will define a loop using this same structure here, but we'll no longer need the question marks since we'll know that the data exists. So we'll say customer query dot data dot data dot customers dot map. And this will take a function with the parameter here being called customer and let's just go ahead and return a paragraph with the customer name. So saving this, taking a look at the site, you can see the customer names are displayed on the page. This comes directly from a MongoDB database. Here's a quick preview of what that looks like. You can adjust what you're displaying in React based on your data structure, but one other thing I will do is I will add a key for this since we are in a loop, and this is going to be the customer dot underscore ID, which is the expected structure for MongoDB. So now the question is, what happens when we change this data? Will this data be updated? That is the whole topic of this video. So it took a little bit of time to set up, but now we can talk about stale data. The important thing first is to start with all of the defaults. Let's understand what happens when we don't change any of the settings. So change your use query to a blank settings, and then inside of our new query client, we will remove this object we passed in. So now we get the defaults. This default behavior is that anytime we click off the page and back on the page, and you can see this better in the network tab, you will see a new request being made to get the most up-to-date customers. Another scenario is if you leave the page, say go to a new tab and then go back, it will also make that request. Very similar concept. It actually is the same because clicking on the dev tools is considered the web page losing focus. So the first thing that will cause a refetch is losing focus. That means if this data changes, let's go ahead and change some of this. I'm gonna delete some of these junk customers. All right, so I remove that. And as soon as I go back to our page, you can see the new data is displayed. The next thing that will cause a refetch is if you lose connection, which you can simulate by pressing this button here. Anytime we get reconnected, it will make a new request for new data, which is pretty handy because, you know, if you're offline for a while, when you come back online, you're automatically gonna have the latest data. Okay, so, so far we've talked about two ways that new data is retrieved when the page is focused on and when you reconnect to the network. A third way is on component mount, which 
is a little harder to see in this scenario, but if you can imagine, you know, the first time visiting, it, it's loaded. And then if we switch to different pages on the application, anything that renders this component will cause new data to be fetched. Now, a fourth way of refetching new data is on some interval. So we can pass an object here and say interval, and it's called refetch interval. We'll set this to 5,000 or 1,000 times five. And now it's going to fetch every five seconds. And you'll be able to see that network request pop up here. So far, we've talked about all these different ways that you can get new data from the back end. But you might not always want to do that. So you can say, hey, this data is still fresh. You don't need to make additional queries to the back end. The way you do that is with a property on this object called stale time. And this is also in milliseconds. So let's go ahead and say 1000 times 10. So 10 seconds. What this will do is prevent the retrieval of any new data for 10 seconds. So let's see this. We will close out of this. We will wait adequate time for this to say stay a one, and then we will refocus on the window. This triggers a new request, and now this is said to be fresh. So it says fresh one. This will prevent any new network requests until those 10 seconds have passed and it's moved to stale. So to see this in action, let's repeat that process. So we click, get it in focus, and now even if I click out of the window and click back in, nothing is happening until it goes to stale again. So now we're limiting our refetching to at least 10 seconds between fetches. Now, if you have multiple queries, you can configure these separately. So let's just duplicate this for a second and we'll just call this customer query two and we'll just call this customers two. Let's change this to 20 seconds and we'll take a look. Let's go ahead and restart this. They're currently both fresh. Now one is stale, so when I click, we only get one request. If we wait for them both to go back to stale, a little bit longer, getting, okay, there we go. Now when I focus, you can see both of the requests were made. So pretty much any time we go into focus, all of the stale queries are going to be refreshed. If you don't want a certain one to do that, you will just disable it. So we could go in here and say refresh on window focus and set this to false. And now only one of those is going to fetch on window focus. So we'll wait for them both to go to stale. And there we go, they're both stale. So now when I click on the window, only one of them is refreshed. So this customer's one is always going to be stale unless we refresh it in another way, such as the different ways we talked about earlier. So if we get disconnected and reconnect, they both go to fresh. So you can configure which of those four refresh triggers you want to be applied to a specific query. And these all are properties on the object here. So you can type in refetch. You can see refetch interval, refetch on mount, which is when the component is loaded, refetch on reconnect, and refetch on window focus. There is a refetch interval in background, which will continue to refetch on an interval if the window is minimized or not being seen. So that would just be a Boolean true or false, which you can use at the same time as refetch interval. So that is a summary of the four different refetching techniques you can use. I think we'll be able to check out refetch on mount in more detail in the next video because I'm going to restructure our code to talk about caching. So don't worry about this one too much yet. Other than that, it's important to know that the default stale time is zero. So by default, everything is stale all the time. It's never considered fresh. So any of the refetch behaviors except the interval, which you can see defaults to false. All the others are going to default to true. Refetch on mount is true. Refetch on connect defaults to true. And refetch on window focus doesn't actually have a tooltip here, but we've seen that in action because that's the default behavior. Clicking on and off of the page will retrieve new data. So let's go through an example now with refetch interval, which is kind of interesting because this is going to get new data regardless of whether the stale time has been passed. 
So even if the data is not stale, it will still retrieve new data. So let's say this refetch interval is just a second. The query will never go stale. And we're only going to need one query for this, so let's get rid of that extra one we created just to keep things clean. So taking a look at this, it's going to always be in either fresh or fetching. This is strange to me that you can have it set up for a 10 second stale time with an automatic refetch every second. And I'm not sure the scenario, if any, that you would want to do that. So I think the more appropriate option would be to actually have a longer refetch interval than the stale time. So let's say this one is 10 seconds and this one is a single second. Now, when we take a look at our site, it'll be stale and we can be sure that it will automatically refetch for us even if we don't click on the window every 10 seconds. You can see it went to fresh and then it's back to stale. And taking a look at our network tab, we should see a request every 10 seconds. Using a smaller stale time than the refetch interval could reduce unnecessary requests from other things for a certain period of time if we so wished. So let's increase these numbers just a bit so we can see this in action. Let's say that one is 10,000 milliseconds and this one is 100,000 milliseconds. Now what's gonna happen is after 10 seconds, it's going to go to stale. We know if we wait at least 100 seconds, we will get new data. We can get new data earlier than that with some of these other triggers, such as a disconnection, which will bring it back to fresh. But during those 10 seconds, while it's fresh, we can't get new data even if we disconnect. So those are the essentials to understanding the relationship between refetch interval and stale time. Using both at the same time is a little confusing. The important thing to realize if say we were counting up from zero, the time before we reach stale time will not allow any refetching. Once we surpass that stale time, so the time between this number and this number, we will allow refetching from other means with the ultimate result if no refetching has been made it will refetch once this timer has been hit. So yeah, make sure you watch that a couple times if that was confusing. What I wanna do now is actually remove the stale time just to avoid any confusion between those two values. We will go ahead and maintain the refetch on window focus being false, and this will allow us to see this interval a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and set it to one second here. What we will see is a new request every second. The final attribute I wanna talk about in this video is the background fetching. So we are given the ability to say, refetch interval in background, and we can set this to true or false. By default, it is in fact false. So when it's false, what this means is that if we go away from this page, such as going back to Visual Studio Code, let me clear this off, you can see it growing pretty quickly, but right now we have like three or four, we go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's say we wait, you know, five or 10 seconds. She can tell you about my day. I mean, I've been cleaning most of the day, shooting some vids, trying to get that AdSense, you know how it goes. Be sure to subscribe. Okay, let's go back. You can see we haven't continue to make requests. And as soon as we go back to the page, it continues. So if we go back and change this to true, like so, now what will happen is if we clear this off and we go back to Visual Studio Code, you know, we're going in here, we're typing for a little bit, and, you know, we fall asleep, leave our application running. Uh-oh, we've made all these requests when we're not even focused on the page. Not only we're not focused, but the application's actually in the background. So I think the default behavior of this being false is best. I think this could be useful if you need it to be that you're off of the page and you come back to the page and it, you already have the most up-to-date data and there's no time allowed for it to go make another network request, then you will want that to be set to true. I can really only see that being used for really mission critical stuff. Because it doesn't really matter if we go back and focus on the site and it takes a fraction of a second to refresh that data. Not a huge deal in my opinion. Now one more thing, let's go ahead and make sure refetch interval and background is false, so the default behavior, and let's clear this off and we'll go to a new tab, wait a couple of seconds, give us some time, and go back to that tab. You can see that switching tabs does work. But 
the application losing focus does not work. So if I click on the network over here, the developer tools, although the site is no longer in focus technically, it is not considered in the background. It's just an important thing to know. To illustrate the refetch interval and background being true, what we can do is now that we know switching tabs will actually put it in the background, let's go ahead and switch to a new tab and note the last name here is new name. We will go over to MongoDB, we will edit this and change this name value to something else like Caleb Curry. We'll hit uh, save, update, and as soon as we go to the React application, it's automatically correct. We didn't have to wait for the data to change or to make a new network request. If instead of using the background refetch interval being set to true and you just had refetch on window focus set to true, you might see a flash of incorrect data for a small moment, just when the data is stale and it's being refetched. So to see this, let's go ahead and change this and we'll just change this to JSON or something and update. We go visit the site and you saw for a very small fraction of a second Caleb Curry on the page. You can see this better with simulating throttling using fast 3G or slow 3G. So if I clicked slow 3G, went and changed this name over here back to Caleb Curry, and then we go visit the site, it's Jason, and then it goes to Caleb Curry. So at this point, you should have a pretty good understanding of all of the different settings, bunch of different combinations and variations. So apologies if this was kind of like, oh, you can do this and you can also do this. It was kind of hard to design the best way to go through these settings besides just trying each one of them. The one we didn't really talk about is on mount, which we're going to talk about in the next video, as well as caching.